A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. It's Kate and Oliver Hudson, <laughs> host of the new podcast, Sibling, Sibling Revelry. Revelry. That's right. We started this show because, you know what? No one talks about siblings and that dynamic. The siblings, they know each other better than anybody. Yes. You know. Listen to Sibling Revelry on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Episode 61, How to Achieve Digital Minimalism. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Frugal Friends Podcast. My name is Jen. This is Jill. This month in our book club, we are reading Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport, who is so wonderful. If you haven't picked up his book, Deep Work, or his new one, Digital Minimalism, highly recommend, especially because this is the one we're going through this month. But we really wanted to do a deep dive in a single episode about digital minimalism because it's like actually an important thing now because it's 2019. Mm -hmm. And because minimalism and it's a buzzword and uh, your next step after Marie Kondo is your computer and your technology. Exactly. And it just goes on from there. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about the foundations, the mindset behind it, and a whole bunch of things that you can do to become a more digital minimalist. But first, our sponsors. This episode is also brought to you by running. Have you considered walking outside but would like to go faster? (laughs) Try running. Running can get you away from your phone, your computer, your problems, your life, all while improving your cardiovascular health and preventing you from spending more money. Running, like walking, but slightly faster. (laughs) I read this in the show notes before we started recording. I literally was laughing out loud. Like, I love it so much. You want to walk, but faster? (laughs) Plus, that was the only line I had written until like 10 seconds ago, too. Would you like to walk, but would like to go faster? (laughs) Run from your problems. Run from your phone. It works. Yes. Except until it catches up with you because you're not the only thing that can run. Right. And eventually you'll get tired. So you have to put in place other parameters to keep you away from your phone and your computer and your life and your problems. So (laughs) we're not talking about your life problems in this episode, but we are definitely talking about your digital consumption today. So. Let's dive in to our first headline. This one is from Nick Wignall, and it is, what is digital minimalism? Hmm. Great yeah. question, Nick. And right? then he answers it. So Thank you, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. These are like the foundations of digital minimalism. Which was helpful for me because I think I've had in my mind, and it's not incredibly inaccurate, but I've thought about digital minimalism in terms of how to clean up your technology so that it is more user-friendly, not bogged down with a bunch of digital clutter. Right. So if we have Mm -hmm. pictures and photo albums all over our living room, it in some ways can feel the same way as having files all over your desktop or organized digital photos. Mm -hmm. So that is part of it. And we'll get into that. But it's more than that. It's also talking about minimizing our interactions with technology 
in, in intentional ways. And so they talk about how minimalism isn't just about stuff. And I can get caught up in this too, thinking that minimalism is, is uh, centered around how much we have or how much we don't have. And that's just completely inaccurate. While it's a part of minimalism, it's more of a mindset in the way that we are choosing to live, to add more value and bring greater intentionality into our lives. So did a, this article did a great job of really identifying that and showcasing this idea and then breaking it down for us even further. What were your thoughts, Jen? Yeah, I've thought a lot about this for several years now because I, when I was writing the No Spend Challenge Guide back in 2017, I thought a lot about the correlation of all of the media and all of the content that we consume and how that translates Mm. to increased spending, whether that's online spending or spending like tangible in-person spending. Mm -hmm. So I have been on just like a, a light kind of quest to be as digitally minimalist as possible just Mm -hmm. to avoid all that temptation. Mm -hmm. When I heard about this book, I was super happy that somebody else had written it for me. And I'm super excited that somebody like Cal Newport, because he's a lot smarter and he has so many wise words. Yeah. So yeah, and he just puts it out there so plainly and has some great tips. Yeah. So speaking of Cal Newport, both the articles that we're going to reference today and our book club is referencing Cal Newport. So it's worth giving you this quote on how he defines digital minimalism. And he says, digital minimalism is a philosophy that helps you question what digital communication tools and behavior surrounding these tools add the most value to your life. It is motivated by the belief that intentionally and aggressively clearing away low value digital noise and optimizing your use of the tools that really matter can significantly improve your life. Yes. So very well crafted Mm -hmm. sentences to describe what it is that we're talking about here. And so we can flesh that out a bit more. This, This article that we're talking about by Nick Wignall Is that how you pronounce his name? Hopefully. Hopefully. There you go. So (laughs) he goes through a couple of tips on what this can look like, three to be exact. So the first one he cites is technology use should be intentional, not habitual, which is pretty self-explanatory off the bat, but... He goes into greater detail to say that technology is highly addictive. They've created it in such a manner so as to continue to draw us back in with, and I'm sure many of you have heard this, particularly with the impact that technology can have on children, that it is supposed to activate the pleasure receptors in our brain when we get likes on Facebook or people are responding to us on Twitter or Instagram. And so it has this subconscious addictive nature to it. Uh, The flashing lights, just so much about the instant gratification of technology and the speed at which we can have access to things can can draw us in an almost a mindless nature. And so it's not to say that technology is bad, right? In and of itself, it isn't. And none of us are saying that, but it's the habitual pieces that can be, that can have negative or unhealthy or unhelpful impacts on us. So what, what working towards digital minimalism could mean is guarding against mindlessness. And so I, mind, mind, mindfulness is also a buzzword these days, but that doesn't mean, I mean, it's a buzzword for a reason because it's got some great tools in it for us. And I think really it speaks to this intentionality that if we are mindful about why we're getting on our technology... And it's not just a habitual thing. Like I get in the car and I just do this thing or I uh, sit on the toilet and here's what I, you know, I just go to Facebook automatically and not <laughs> like, not never done that. What? Where'd that no, example what? come no, from? That's weird. Ooh. 
<laughs> you know what? I know I'm not alone, though, because they are creating those toilet paper holders with specific spots for your phone. And I'm like, this is bad obscene. if like the entire world is thinking, where I need a place to put my cell phone in the bathroom. Like, why is our cell phone coming with <laughs> us in the bathroom? That's so, it's gross. Leave it in your purse or in your kitchen or anyhow, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> And but in this way, what you to speak to what you were saying, Jen, that if we are more mindful, then we are less likely to be uh, influenced by marketers and advertisers who are trying to get us to spend all of our money on whatever it is that they're selling us. And if we're mindlessly engaging in these things, we might mindlessly throw our money away, mindlessly purchase. Mm-hmm. And and so that's where this intersects with frugality. And honestly, not even marketers and sponsored posts, but our friends and family. Yeah. There have been so many times where I've scrolled down and I've seen a picture of Jill and she's doing something cool. And I'm like, oh, I want to do that cool thing. So I have to spend money to do that cool thing. Whereas I wouldn't have even known about it before or wearing, you know, wearing her cool clothes, which I can't even buy because (laughs) they were like thrifted. So I'm sorry. Am I derailing you in your frugal lifestyle? (laughs) Like with with all the cool things I'm doing? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And all the cool places. It's just really hard to be frugal. When I see you in my news feed, but I'm so, so sorry. It's, it's not always intentional. So that's why you have to like guard your own eyes and mind yeah. against it. So yeah. Um, and number two, technology is for making stuff, not feeling better. I loved this one because I'm not a huge social media lover. I do it. I have my Instagram, Modern Frugality, and I uh, am in the Frugal Friends community on Facebook. And I mm-hmm. love being there. That, like, if we're talking like about conmariing our laptops and cell phones, that Facebook group brings me joy. And talking to people on mm-hmm. Instagram that listen to the show or read Modern Frugality, like, that brings me joy. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Mm hmm. I do have to be on my computer a lot and I have to go into the Facebook group for like if I ask a question and I want to include those questions into the show Mm -hmm, or whatnot. mm -hmm. So there are times where I have to go into these like social media things, but they're for like making things. Mm -hmm. And I do, I get caught up sometimes in the scrolling Mm -hmm. to make me feel better. So seeing this... Mm-hmm. Like was an instant like gut punch. Oh, it's challenging to all of us. Uh, yeah, we are not presenting these articles from a position of authority saying we've arrived. <laughs> like, these... if you thought that's what we were doing here, <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> yeah. uh, news flash. The, yeah, I mean, I am saying this to myself because I take my phone into the bathroom with me and in a habitual way. And so, mm-hmm. but this is where that balance comes into play of, you know, this article references that sometimes we can just mindlessly go watch animal videos or scroll through fun news articles And I will say that to some degree, that can be an okay thing. You know, when we talk about self-care and the things that are life-giving or provide breaks or leisure or rest, they can be good, right? If it's something that brings a smile to your face on a particularly difficult or stressful day, then that's fantastic. But to be mindful about it, to say, I am Mm going to go on, I'm going to watch a cat video because it's going to, I mean, this isn't me. This is not what I choose to do, but I know people who do. What, you know, so if cat videos, your jam, definitely do that. Enjoy that for five minutes and then pull away and engage Mm -hmm. with something else. Yeah. And one, one more thing I'll say about the making stuff is that I think we also, while we're making stuff, have to be really aware of what we're making is that we're not making more of the things that people are just going to scroll through to like mindlessly look at and feel better Mm. like that we're producing podcast episodes that are helpful and encouraging that Mm. we're producing like show notes and articles that teach people things and can 
be really activated in real life. And so that's another like, not gut punch, because I feel like we are really doing that, Mm -hmm. but just like maybe a gut check to say like, okay, so technology is really great for like getting your message out there Mm -hmm. and, and getting these lessons out there. But let's make sure that we're doing it for the right reasons and not just mm-hmm. uh, not just to be there, mm-hmm. not just to have a presence. Mm-hmm. Which is really tough for what we're heading more and more towards, which is working from home, working remotely, certainly wherever you work, requiring a computer to do the job unless mm-hmm. you are in some sort of trade and, but even if you are, you are probably using technology in some capacity, even just for, you know, billing or providing estimates to people or... Even as a mechanic yeah, nowadays. Yeah, exactly. And so our faces can get so accustomed to being in front of a screen, which can have all kinds of impacts just on our physical body. But it then requires a greater attention to what we're doing with the rest of our time and not just going back to what's familiar and the computer and the phone and the TV just screens all day, which is tough. Yeah. The uh, The American Academy of Pediatrics has now said that children two and under should not be exposed to any screens. So no screens until after 24 months. Gosh. So my plan of having Disney Jr. raise my child <laughs> has now been set back two years. So this is this episode is really important for me because I need to figure out what to do. Uh, figure it out for to, yourself so you can right, raise up a for kid. The, mm-hmm. For at least two years. And then I assume that we're fine. Oh, man. Yeah, there's so much that is almost overwhelming to consider in that because you're speaking to we can't take somebody someplace that we haven't been. If we Mm. are filling all of our free time with our screens, how in the world are we going to expect to raise up children who don't spend all of their time in in and on screens? Yes. Oh my gosh. And, and they do. Actually, I heard my friend is a high school teacher and whenever his high school students, when he catches them on their phones or having their phones out, he will airdrop them pictures um, of just text with like spoilers for like big movies that have just come out. That's amazing. So, I mean, so most recently was this Avengers movie. That was so delightful to me. <laughs> that's funny. But that, <laughs> yeah. again, though, that's just connecting and perpetuating I know, screens but that he is using that to, I mean, it, it is funny. He's using the I'm screens not... against the screens. Right. <laughs> and I but think all teachers he, should do it. That teacher has to have his phone out in the classroom in order to do that. Yeah. And I can't help but wonder, <laughs> even if we don't have... Even if we don't allow children to be on these screens to the extent that we ourselves are on them, they're still in their faces or seeing our faces in them. The amount that we are recording and photographing kids is overwhelming to me. I don't have kids, but I can't help but wonder what is the impact of that going to be just constantly seeing mom and dad or grandma and grandpa with their phone while mm-hmm. looking at you, like, so you are getting mm-hmm. attention, but it's their face and their phone recording your every move. That's a whole other conversation. Yeah. Although related, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> which now goes to the third point. Yes. Uh, technology should never come before people. And while this can be so easy to get on board with, like, of course it shouldn't. Yeah, duh. Uh, we still let it. And yeah. and while technology and specifically social media can promise us connection, it often impedes relationship with those who are currently in front of us or even the connection that we are having with people on social media is not a true reflection of accurate connection. We're either getting into arguments with people that we probably would not be getting into if we were face to face. We feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. I don't know why to say things to people with the protection of being behind a screen. 
or we're getting caught up on things so that we feel as though we don't need to get together with that person because we see their whole life update on Facebook. Exactly. Yep. So there's so, and worst of all is if we are on those things when we are currently in the presence of people and we're missing out on connecting with who's actually in front of us. Yeah. Which is where that mindfulness piece comes in of where am I presently? That's what mindfulness is, is just connecting us to ourselves and to our emotions in the present moment and what is happening around us in the present moment. And technology often serves as an escape from the present moment, which is never Mm going to be long-term super healthy for us. Sometimes a short escape can provide a little bit of relief, but long-term, anything that's going to disconnect us from what's actually happening to us currently is not a good thing. Well said. Yes. So these foundations of digital minimalism are technology use should be intentional, not habitual. Technology should never come before people. And technology is for making stuff not feeling better. Mm -hmm. So we know New Year's resolutions often don't stick. In fact, on average, they last around 30 days. So if saving money is on your 2024 resolution list, Here's a foolproof way to stick to yours. Switch your phone provider to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. For those of you paying close to 40 bucks a month for just one phone line, this means a savings of $300 over the course of the year. We especially like Mint because all plans come with unlimited talk and text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash frugal. That's mintmobile.com slash frugal. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash frugal. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So, buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So, how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic, oracle.com slash strategic. We know habits are not formed in 21 days and sometimes they take a long time to break. And so there are a lot of things that we can do, a lot of steps we can take to digitally declutter and train ourselves in more mindfulness. And so that's where our next article is. Mm. And it is a post on Medium by Dan Sylvester. And it's Digital Minimalism, How to Simplify Your Online Life. And we are going to spend some time in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really like the tips that are offered here. There's some really great meat A lot of these articles that we've read throughout our podcasting one-year adventure, there's a little bit of this take the meat, spit out the bone mentality, which is always Mm -hmm. a good mentality to have. But in this one, for sure, you should never eat bones. There's a lot of meat. There's hardly bone. So yeah, or other stuff. (laughs) So he goes into how we can do this. So this is more of the tangible practices of how we can incorporate some legitimate minimalism on our technology. So what I kind of referenced at the beginning of how we can create the most value and be the most mindful in 
our interaction with our technology. And so the first thing that he lists is using the computer intentionally. And so what this means is to focus on adding value and making accessible the things you use on a regular basis. So some real-time tips that he gives here on how to do this is number one, to clean up the desktop. So when you look at your desktop screen, do you have a bunch of files all over the place from years and years just piled up or is it kind of clean? That will help just even brain clutter feeling over, you know, not feeling overwhelmed if that's cleaned up. Choosing a clean wallpaper on the backdrop can also help. Hiding your dock so you can do this in your dock preferences so that when you pull up that that first front screen, you don't have a bunch of the apps and files all right in front of your face. He also suggests to uninstall programs. So this is just good practice. Like if we were to relate this to routine car maintenance to on a regular basis, go through and see what programs am I not using? What's taking up valuable space on my computer's hard drive? Get rid of those things. Install updates. So a quick caution about this, make sure that you do some research on the updates that your computer's wanting you to install. Sometimes you can find reviews on whether or not that update, if it has all the glitches out of it, what might it do to some of your currently running program. So just be aware of what the update is going to do, but that is usually best practice. Yeah, especially if you have an older computer. Mm Mm-hmm. And to work in full screen mode. So this is something that you can also manage in your um, system's preferences so that you can eliminate distraction uh, so that the screen is taking up the entire screen. You don't see all of these other windows open on your computer. If you are not computer savvy and you don't really know what we're talking about (laughs) with, with all of these terms, definitely ask a friend or somebody who knows about computer things to help you to be able to do this maintenance on your computer. It is important for the longevity of your computer, which will also help to save you money in the long run if you take care of it in this way. Mm -hmm. And it's not super hard. Like I'm not a computer person and I have done all of these things. But you are a millennial. And so we do just by nature know a bit more than the baby boomers when it comes to computers. (laughs) Jill, what is your desktop like? So right now it is pretty clean. It's a picture of a desert. <laughs> Me too. I should probably change it's that. I think it's just one, one of the pictures that yeah. comes with my computer. But I try is, my best. It's just the picture that came with it. Yeah. <laughs> I will intentionally on a regular basis go through and get rid of downloads. A lot of times downloads will go mm-hmm. straight to my desktop. Or my Z- my desktop is where I will save things that I need immediate quick access to for a short period of time. So like pictures that I'll use for frugal friends. So once once I'm done with that thing, I will go immediately to erase it. So it's accessible for me to get it when I need it, but then also super accessible for me to delete when it's right on my desktop. So it is mm-hmm. pretty clean. Yes. How about you? And actually I it's the same same background of the desert. I have a file named desktop that I put random things that don't really have a place. Uh I will just put them in the desktop folder so I can access them from the desktop, but they're not on the desktop. Desktop Desktop on desktop, baby. Ooh. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And so that brings us to our second part of digital minimalism is simplifying files. Mm. So files are kind of tricky. But as hard drives get bigger, we accumulate more digital junk because we don't have to think about it. You remember when you used to have to delete all of your pictures on your phone Mm -hmm. or computer Mm -hmm. to make room for more things? And we don't have to do that now. So we just have so much more clutter, Mm -hmm. but not healthy. And this is something you don't do just once. You have to go through and like every six months to a year, redo it. Mm -hmm. So first up is deleting just delete all the files you don't need. Delete like those download zip files, everything that you won't use. Uploading things to the cloud. So you can split your files into two categories, the ones you use regularly and the ones you don't. 
Mm. And so for the latter, you can upload them to the cloud. You can make content searchable. So choose easy to remember names for your folders and files. So you can just go into Finder and, and search it. And then you don't have to like look through everything. And have fewer folders. Instead of having all of your things just on your desktop, just have one desktop folder. Mm-hmm. But he says use fewer but bigger folders. So he has work, personal, and fun. Mm-hmm. And so on my desktop... I literally have desktop, frugal friends, modern frugality, Kindle publishing. That's it. That is my desktop. I like it. Those four folders. How often do you go through and clean? Um, whenever I am procrastinating something. <laughs> Not so much super often. I think of this, it feels like a spring cleaning in some ways. Like it could be a really good practice to even do at the start of winter. If you get that bug Mm -hmm. in you of, oh man, I want to do something here, but it's not springtime. Yeah. Clean up your... If you can like assign yourself a season, Mm -hmm. like in Florida, we don't go outside in the summer. So summer would be a great time to stay inside and delete all your files. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So another one that I, this is the one I have the most trouble with and it's clear to neutral. So at the end of the day, close all your tabs and programs Mm. and delete or move all files from downloads Mm. and empty the trash, shut off the computer. Yeah. I don't do that at all. Um, I always have a million tabs open Mm -hmm. because I research for a living. Yeah. So I have like a hundred tabs. I have, my trash is always full. I always got a ton of things in downloads. The computer never goes off. Mm-hmm. So, because when I do shut down all the tabs, I do find that when I, I can easily open them back up, there's a history and I usually don't need every single tab open that I had open. So this is the biggest one that I need to work on. And then the last one is for this file is access don't own. Ownership can be stressful and said take advantage of the access economy by streaming video and music. And I feel like that's an okay suggestion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I don't like to own either if I can access for free. Oh, certainly. Hashtag frugality. Hashtag. Also, along with these tips... A better phone experience. So in working towards digital minimalism, this can apply to our phones also. And so he suggests... Biggest ones probably. Yeah. He suggests removing apps. So going through and reevaluating what do you use on a regular basis? What don't you need? What might just be a distraction? He challenges to remove social media. Not because it's a bad thing, but because it can be a bad habit for the reasons that we've listed already, um, that they, that it can just be a habit. It can just be something that you go on to do when you're bored and isn't actually adding value or production or effectiveness to your life. And he also says to have a mindful home screen and the way that this can happen is by having your four most used apps accessible to you, like in your um, on the home the screen. home screen, yeah, yeah, and then have the rest in a folder so that it can feel very clean. Then he says to clean up contacts, so go through and get rid of people who maybe you have multiple numbers for them because their number has changed. Make sure that that is all in correct working order. If you've got old coworkers that you're not contacting anymore, get rid of those contacts. Just go through and figure out who are you contacting now? Who's there that you don't need to be in your contact list anymore and get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Delete that ex-boyfriend's number. That's your sign. Do it. <laughs> You're you don't need to contact him. There's your sign. Um, and use the search on your phone. So rather than having just a, a tons and tons of apps all throughout your phone, just use the search and let that be your friend going forward to find contacts and that kind of a thing. And then to remove notifications. So don't be having Facebook notify you every time somebody liked a photo or every time you get a new email from some company. 
<laughs> Those are just distracting. This, this actually backfired on me once because I was supposed to meet a friend for coffee and we were just communicating through Instagram messages uh, and I had my Instagram notifications off yeah. and this was early in my pregnancy before I actually knew I was pregnant and I was very tired and mm. I I fell asleep and I just slept through the whole thing oh. and I didn't get any notifications that would have awoken me so that I would have shown up oh. and I felt so bad. So set alarms instead of notifications. Yeah. <laughs> and or use use the notifications that you know are going to be helpful or necessary yes. to your work. So now I have uh, notifications for Instagram messages, but not for like mm-hmm. any likes or comments or right. anything. I have notifications for my calendar, but not anything mm-hmm. else because that's important to have things to be reminded. Hey, in fifteen minutes, you're podcasting. Don't leave Jen hanging. Right. I get so lonely when you do that. Yeah. And then to utilize the do not disturb option on your phone and even considering having hours of your day that you would do do not disturb. So possibly 8 p.m. till 8 a.m. putting your phone on do not disturb and choosing relationship instead or some other leisure activity that's life giving to you instead. Yes. For these next two, we won't go as depth in them because... I feel like you're getting the picture, but Mm -hmm. the next one is emails. Mm. So like we said before with social media, he says, turn off notifications to time block when you're going to check your emails. So you don't have to be responding to emails five minutes after they're sent. And that can actually almost do you a disservice because then people just assume you're always available. Yes. Like make people think that you're a a hot commodity. Yes. Make them wait for that wisdom. Yeah. And then checking your email just twice a day. So Mm -hmm. like once at 11, like once at four, and then you're done. Mm -hmm. And then close it out of sight, out of mind. Unsubscribe from things you don't need. We are going to share service that can help you do that a little quicker. And then be succinct when you're writing emails. So don't write 10 sentences when two suffice. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So try replying to every email with three sentences or less, because that will also should prompt the person you're replying to to also Mm -hmm. be succinct. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. hopefully, and then you will both be respective of each other's times. I've been practicing good communication with this too, and I have found that it helps me clear the clutter that digital things can create for me, specifically with emails. So Mm -hmm. not, not feeling as though I need to respond immediately to people, but responding to every email. Even if it just means a follow up, sure, you're welcome, glad to help. Or, you know, things that maybe seem like maybe they don't need a response, but just to confirm, saw this email, got it, that's closed. It's not open-ended, which has helped me to feel like, okay, I have I have done my due diligence with each of these emails and there is clear communication and I don't feel like things are hanging open-ended. Yeah, because there, so I do the opposite. And if I see one of those, like, I'll just ignore it. And then I'll get follow-up emails. And if I had just done the hard thing after the first email and been like, I don't really think I'm interested in this, but thanks, Mm -hmm. I could have saved myself more trouble. (laughs) Right. I think I, I have been similar. I have thought that, okay, if someone just, you know, sends me something that doesn't necessarily need a response, I don't, thinking I'm saving myself time. But I've realized that it actually creates a little bit of clutter in my mind to know that somebody sent me an email, I didn't respond to it. And then on their end, they could still come back and say, hey, did you get that email? just to confirm that it was sent to you. And then there's even more that you have to now do to say, yes, I got it. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So it can just knock out some of those extra steps that could be created in the future. Yes. And if for some reason there is an email that you think is going to take more than 10 minutes to write a reply, get up, go talk to your coworker or wait until they take a break personal interactions beat email any day of the week. So if you can Mm. 
have the personal interaction instead of the email if you think it's going to take you a while. Mm -hmm. Uh, Or call. Give a call. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes we've gotten out of the habit of doing this because it's more uncomfortable. Like, I would rather sit behind my screen and write an email than make a phone call or uh, talk to somebody in person. But, like, nine times out of ten, the talking in person or on the phone Mm -hmm. is Mm -hmm. better. Yeah. Nice. And last but not least is the internet. Dun, dun, dun. So with this one, and it is the last because it's one of the biggest potential time wasters and not adding value to your life. So with this, some tips here is to know what your time wasters are. Just this self-knowledge can help us to create separation and greater intentionality here. So if I know that it's a time waster for me to be on Facebook, then I can be more mindful and maybe even put up barriers for myself to getting onto social media. Others with the internet is to unfollow and unfriend. This is speaking specifically to social media. If people are popping up in your newsfeed that are either constantly trying to sell you something or their posts just downright annoy you or anger you, that's not adding value to your life. You, Amen. Amen. And it's not adding connection either. So you can unfollow and unfriend if it's not helpful for your day to day or your opinion of that person. I unfollow a lot of people or you can actually snooze people for 30 days now and that still keeps you as their friend. So you're, you know, nobody thinks that you've like, they've betrayed you or whatever. So snooze and unfollow, which really good. Don't do this in real life. But again, social media is not real life. We interact in ways that we don't in real life. So Mm -hmm. with that being said, feel free to delete social media. Feel free to listen to this podcast and take permission to delete it all together you because have our permission. that can be a time waster. It can add clutter. It can add unnecessary arguments and unnecessary opinions of people. You could think that somebody is an awful person because of how they interact online, but then you meet them in real life and it's like, that's that's not even really you. And I'd rather know the you in person than the online you. So yeah. yeah, get rid of it. And even though we'll miss you in the Frugal Friends community on Facebook, we would miss you that. still. Yeah. We would encourage you to delete it if it's a hindrance. Yeah. If it's a stumbling block. And they also recommend no bookmark bar. Of course, this is just if you're using it for time wasters. I love my bookmark bar because it helps Same. me to be more efficient and have quick access, right? And that's part of organization and and helping your processes in your minimalist lifestyle. So for me, my bookmark yeah. bar helps me to complete this podcast in, in a more efficient manner. So take that one with a yeah. grain of salt. And But I don't have Facebook in my bookmark bar. Yeah. Just oh, yeah. Work stuff. Right. And lastly, to block websites. So if there are just websites you don't want to be going on whatsoever, you can block them. And these are some ways you can clean up your digital life. Mm, Yes. I like that at the end he says digital minimalism. It's a process. Mm -hmm. So you're going to do these things. You're going to have to do them again and again. But eventually, over time, it will minimize the things that you are consuming online. And on your computer. So, speaking but, of again and again, and things that are not going away and are going to be yes. constant themes, it's time for the, the bill, bill of the, the week. week. That's right. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the Bill of the Week. My name is Kathy and my mortgage is my Bill of the Week. I have been auto-paying my mortgage for years, but I recently set a goal of paying it off early. And this totally shifted my mindset. I now look forward to paying my mortgage so that I can track it on a spreadsheet and see how much my principal balance goes down each month. 
and I love making additional payments with money earned from side hustles. Uh, so all of this to say bye-bye mortgage. Yes, Yay, Kathy. Kathy. I love it. That's amazing. It's so cool oh to hear you gosh. say that you look forward to it because of this yes. new goal now, which is so true. And you don't think about that, that once you set a goal, it can completely shift perspective on something that now you mm-hmm. want to do it because each time you do it, you're getting closer and closer to this amazing goal that you've set. So cool. Uh, yes. Uh, we're so happy for you, Kathy. And please let us know when you do pay yes, off that mortgage. That'll be a good day. Yeah. We want to hear that bill too, because that is so, so cool. We were making extra mortgage payments for a while and we have paused that, but mm-hmm. I also looked forward to making those extra payments because it's like I can see how much money I'm saving and how much time I'm taking off mm-hmm. of my mortgage. Oh, so good. So good. Thanks, Kathy. Yes, Kathy. From the studio who brought you the number one podcast, The Piketon Massacre, this is Murder 101. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. Those murders happened in the mid-1980s. He's out there doing stuff. He just didn't stop. Everything that the students predicted through their profile turned out to be accurate. Redhead killer profile. Male, Caucasian, 5'9 to 6'2, 180 to 270 pounds. Unstable home, absent father and a domineering mother. Right-handed, IQ above 100, most likely heterosexual. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. Just because some of these women no longer have people to speak for them does not mean that they deserve to not be spoken for. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? I said, are you going to kill me? And he said, yes. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. You might be asking yourself, what is sibling revelry? Yeah, well, we just made it up. They'll have some laughs and maybe inspire some people along the way with universal tales of what it's like to grow up with brothers and sisters. We're full blood siblings, the only full blood siblings. In our family. Well, not in the world. I mean, no, in the whole world. (laughs) That's just it. Like, no one. Dive into family tales and explore the human mind with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up, you know, to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be an awesome season. It's more than a podcast, it's a celebration of the ties that bind us. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And now on to our second favorite time of the week. It's the lightning round. The lightning round. I was wondering if you were going to fit that in there, Jill. (laughs) Yes. It's a permanent staple these days. Yes. And so today's lightning round Four inventions of technology that will help you reduce your technology intake. Ooh. So if you're looking to use less technology, get these pieces of technology and it will help you reduce that. None of these. Does that make sense? It does. None of these are sponsors. I know that the way Jen said that no, makes it sound all, like right. they're sponsors, but they're not. None of them are sponsors. They're all free. So yeah, just uh, helpful, and they're all, helpful yeah, tools for you. All slightly redundant. So <laughs> this one is called Stay Focused, and it's a free productivity extension for Google Chrome, and it restricts the amount of time that you can spend on time-wasting websites. So if you don't nice. want, if you want access to Facebook, but you want someone to help you stay accountable to how long you're on it, here you go. Try out Stay Focused. But other similar extensions could include there's a there's one called Self Control <laughs> for Mac. <laughs> There's one called I love these names. These are amazing. I do too. They, they feel like a fake sponsor, but they're not. Yeah, so you've got these are real self control for Mac. You've got Leech Block for Firefox and Cold Turkey for Windows. 
It's yeah. so amazing. If you were wondering why self control wasn't today's sponsor, <laughs> it's this is it's why. because it's an actual thing that you can use to yeah. help you. So, and yes. we'll have not that running is not real. We'll have links and info if you miss that in your driving or your or you're running. <laughs> Back to our sponsor. Uh, feel free LOL. to check out our show notes on our website, yes. and you can get access to these things that we're talking about. Yes. Okay. Number two, unroll dot me. So unroll.me is a web service that filters out all of your commercial emails into one daily email called a roll-up. So instead of getting 30 promotional newsletters every day, you can see them all in one place. And then you can easily unsubscribe to them or put them back in your inbox, whatever. But it cleans up your inbox and it doesn't filter um, like personal emails or anything, just ones that are sent out by like commercial uh, email systems. So I've used that for years and I swear by it. Oh, that's amazing. So, yeah. I'm going to mm-hmm. check that out because then it, that can also free up your the, the amount of space being taken up in your email, right? Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And number three in our lightning round, Ooh-hoo. App Limits. So app limits, I'm about to say a bunch of words that I don't understand, but here you go. (laughs) App limits is built into the iPhone in iOS 12 under screen time. So you can see how much time you're spending in your apps and set limits for how long you want to spend in there each day. So it sounds like this is just specifically for Apple users. Yeah, this is for iPhone users, and I just discovered this and looked. um, First, I checked out screen time because I had never looked at that before and then was instantly embarrassed by how much time I spend in social networking every day. Oh, no, it actually shows you? Yes, yes. Oh, no. And then clicked on app limits, and so now I've given myself a limit every day to how much time. And so then once you have broken that time or you've reached it there is literally like a lock over the the app like the little uh shortcut Mm -hmm. and you can't click on it (laughs) so yeah it's really fun how i mean there's got to be a way to override that right like what if you're in the middle of something you know super important like a super important argument on facebook then what? Well, <laughs> then you can just go back into screen time and turn off app limits. I was typing out my anger and it locked me out. <laughs> Sucks. So that one's good. Yeah. Um, and then one that I just started using, number four, News Feed Eradicator. Mm. You have talked about this. This is cool. Yes. Yes. This is an extension for Chrome and Firefox that replaces your Facebook news feed with an inspirational quote. It's so amazing. It's so good. And I re- it does really save me time because when I have to go into Facebook for stuff in like groups and things, I don't get distracted by my news feed. I can go exactly to where I need to be. And then I can see this really inspirational quote. Wow. Like I wonder if I pull up Facebook right now, what's my quote going to be? I'm going to do it right now. Gosh, I wish that and this was a sponsor because we're so incredibly mm-hmm. stoked on it. Yeah. We should be making money off of this. We're not, though. Sorry, guys. Yes. You're just getting real-time tips that we believe in. Today's quote is, rule your mind or it will rule you. Mm. From this guy named Horace. Not only does it get rid of your news feed, it replaces it with a quote. That's so yeah. out of this world. And I think you can even put custom quotes on there, too. I don't know how to do that, but I saw somewhere that you can do that. Wow. So so those are the four pieces of technology that will help you not use as much technology. Stay focused, unroll.me, app limits, newsfeed eradicator. You're welcome. You are welcome. And that is all we have for today. Jill, we did it. We did it. And he, and you know what? With all this time that you have left over because you have minimized your digital interaction and time spent digitally, you can read a book because we're doing book clubs over here at the Frugal Friends podcast and we're talking about it on the Frugal Friends Facebook community group. So right now it's June 
In case you didn't know, it is June. Mm -hmm. We're reading digital. Well, if you're listening to this in June, it's June. When this comes out, it's it's June. So (laughs) we're we're reading, you guessed it, Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport for our book club. So the conversations on this topic, they're not stopping. That's it. Yeah. And we're going to keep reading it. And we would love to send you a free copy because it is still a pretty new book. Mm. And you may not be able to get it without a wait from your library. So if you would like to win a free copy, leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher, screenshot the review and send it to frugalfriendspodcast at gmail.com. And we will select one winner for every five reviews at the end of the month. And that one winner will win a copy of Digital Minimalism. And if you want an example of a helpful review that is worthy of submission for a free book. This one just Mm -hmm. happens to be five stars. Just happens to be. And it happens from Bren on the run. And they say, love this podcast. Five stars. Love this podcast. It's laugh out loud funny. She actually wrote that out. It's laugh out loud funny. She didn't say LOL, uh, which is great. Honestly, I listen to you both at the gym and I've often gotten a few odd looks from folks because I'm, I'll just start giggling during my workouts. Keep up the fun work, ladies. Love yas. And a red heart. Mm. A little red heart emoji. Back at ya. Back at ya, Bren on the run. So glad that you're listening to us while you're exercising and smiling. What, what a life. Yes. This this is brought to you by running. And yes. So clearly. It's just coming full circle. Full circle multiple and times. We're loving it. We're loving it. That's about it. We don't want to take up any of your, uh, any more of your digital space mm, than we have to. Mm, mm. So we're, we're going to cut it off and we'll see you next week. Boom. Frugal Friends is produced, edited, and mixed by Eric Siriano. Boom. There was a suggestion to stop listening to podcasts and call your friends. Mm, mm, mm. And we are um, your friends. Yeah. So that's why we didn't put that yeah. in the No. My suggestion episode. would be listen to your friends on a podcast mm-hmm. and then become greater friends with them on Frugal Friends Podcast Facebook community group. And use the newsfeed eradicator so that all you need to do is interact with your friends. And you can put quotes from Jill and I in the newsfeed eradicator so that we can just pop up every time you open yes. Facebook. We're just there. <gasps> we should partner with newsfeed eradicator I and wish. just be us popping up. Yeah. Oh, man. Hey, it's Jill. <laughs> hey, it's Jen. Is that what hey, I sound like? It's, I don't know. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Hey, hey, it's Jen and Travis's baby. (laughs) A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. Dive into family tales, explore the human mind, and laugh with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. It's more than a podcast. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be... A- an awesome season. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.